Uh, first, before we get started, the only reason I get to do this interview and be at TIFF is because we partnered up with House of Aurora, and I wanted to give a huge thank you to House of Aurora for making all this possible because TIFF is expensive, and I like having a great partner. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you from us, too. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. Thank I you for be the able to, yeah. notebooks. Right. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, it's yeah, like a year's supply. Right? <laughs> yeah, but you know, like it is important because you know, supporting uh, movies that do not have like a fifty million dollar P and A campaign, it matters to me. And you know, I want to be able to support. You know what I mean? We love that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you we know. love that. Thank you. Also, uh, and this might sound, uh, but like you know, I want to support more uh, women directors. And the only reason that I can, you know, but we're off on a tangent. The first thing I would like to ask is, uh, when did you decide to star in every movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you tell me? Oh, God, man. I didn't even realize I was making the decision, I guess. See, what happened is that this is all the culmination of about three and a half years of work that happens to be coming out at the same time. Got so it. this is not going to be the norm. I just want to put that out there. Going forward, you're not going to see this much of me. Um, but it's really exciting. Um, one of the things, I, I am very happy you guys made this movie because you are showing a side of the story that never gets seen. It's, uh, I think so many people don't realize this story. Since so many people watching this will not have seen the movie yet, can you sort of describe, and I know it's generic and I'm sorry, but could yeah. you talk a little bit about what it's about? Yeah. So on the surface, um, this story um, looks at um, a 15-year-old um, Afro-German girl. She's half white, what Hitler would call Aryan, and um, born of an African-French father. Um, and it's the story of one year in her life where she comes of age um, in 1944 Berlin under Hitler's rule. And um, what you see in the story is um, her um, living through and with, alongside various relationships in her life, um, her mother, her brother, um, as well as a Hitler youth boy who's played by George Mackay. Um, and his, his, his journey towards finding his identity is a mirror of what is actually happening with Lena, who's living in this world where she is not She's not part of a group that is um, targeted for mass destruction in the way that the Jews were, mass murder. But on an individual basis, these Afro-Germans Afro live very difficult, um, uncertain lives. But they live these lives in local German cities and towns and half their family were part of the structure often that was creating the Nazi Germany that we read about in books today. So they had these kind of intrinsic relationships with the local German world, but they also weren't belonging, they weren't fully belonging, um, and they didn't live in communities where they saw themselves reflected in any way, shape or form, it was relative isolation. So it's, the re it's really the story of how she goes um, from girl to woman against, you know, this world that has gone crazy. Uh, for the three of you, uh, talk a little bit about what your reaction was reading the script for the first time and what you know, what was it about the script that said, I, I really want to be a part of this? Um, I think Emma has this incredible ability to weave narratives that tell lessons in a really concise manner. And I think there are so many different dynamics explored in this film that I can't even begin to <laughs> summarize all of them. Um, I think that each dynamic, each scene, each moment is intentional and reveals another layer. Um, about identity, about nation, um, about race, and she does it just really seamlessly. So when I read the script, I was really drawn to that, and the amount of metaphors that existed within it that we were still we were still pulling back in the midst of filming. Um, I also think that Lena's story and and the way that she understands her identity and relates to it, and how that shifts from the beginning of the film to the end, is really compelling and also relatable. Um, I think at first you see this girl who doesn't understand her place in the world, um, or at least doesn't have a full understanding of the world within which she exists. Um, and you see her gain an understanding of her place, of her isolation, of what she represents in her country and what her country is. Uh, and I think that's really beautiful. For me, I think it, what struck me is it's a really personalised story. It's a story of individualism in a, in a mass community and, and how that resonates, you know. 
a ripple in the pond. You throw a stone and there's a ripple. And I think we see these characters go through go through a space and time, which we call history, which is not exactly history. Um, and we get to experience that. And so this is a subjective film. It's a film that you experience. And I think that's what's beautiful about it. For me, it was like through Anna's beautifully crafted script, it's the, it's the questions of, of identity that it raised, that it raises socially and then for me personally and then having then that uh, understanding that those two reflect each other, that you kind of the personal questions of identity are then reverberate to a social level if you don't address them and take responsibility for them. Um, and that I thought was really important to explore personally and socially. Yeah. Um, so that was what it was for me. You're, you're dealing with some intense, sometimes dark subject matter. What is it like on set? What was it like on set making this? What, did, what, did that permeate into the energy in between filming or was it still, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, I do. I mean, I think that um, because of the subject matter, um, it's true that it was emotional. We did go through, you know, just the relationship between Abby and um, Amanda's characters as mother and daughter is emotional. The relationship between George and Amanda's character is emotional, on a, as um, Abby puts so brilliantly, you know, on an intimate level. But we, but we were, we were dealing with this. We were dealing with this massive moment in time and we were in spaces that, that there's, there was nothing we could do, we couldn't get away from it. And so I think we actively worked hard actually to yeah. keep ourselves um, both um, respectful of the circumstances that we were in and the story that we were telling, but also to kind of really be the opposite of the world that this story is about. So it was, for me as a filmmaker, it was, an ex it was a very healing, um, supportive environment. I know everybody says this when they come and sit on the sofa. Like, I know this is what everybody says, but it, for me, it really was like family. I've um, never heard anyone say that <laughs> in any of my interviews ever. I know, I'm gonna be the first. It was, it was like family and it was very, um, there was never a time where I felt like, um, sometimes you can feel like you're pushing a boulder uphill. Sometimes you can, you know, you can be in situations where you're trying to communicate a vision to an actor and they just don't want to hear it. Um, <laughs> that, um, you know. I, like how yeah. I know, don't worry, because I still get my way, because I get to edit it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is that just that just never ever ever happened here. Um, oh, each of okay. these people yeah, okay. were no, but each of these people were partners in the vision. And I keep saying, you know, like I I conceived by myself. I conceived this piece by myself. Someone got me pregnant. Yeah, but it's true. It's all, it was always your baby, right? It was my baby. But you all helped birth it. You. Like every all these. People yeah, well, we helped sofa. raise it. Like you definitely gave birth, you birth to we, the baby. We, we I don't know. Like, I felt like we were all pushing. We were just nannies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but you were nannies with like real love. Um, so for me, what, what I think what was great is that each of the, these actors um, on the sofa with me had had invested in their characters and their story. And I think that makes a huge difference. And there was a huge amount that when I was an actress back in the day, many, many years ago, I was self-aware and I had no concept of anything other than um, what would it look like for me to step into this character. And what I think brilliant actors do is they don't care. They just lose themselves. And that's what the, each of these did every single day um, without the fear that they wouldn't come back. And so in between um, shots, they could be themselves again and we could have normal conversations and then we'd have to switch back into it. And I think that that was necessary because um, this world that we were in was relentless. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. Um, I'm also, uh, and this is, I think movies like this about World War II, and this is a little bit me putting in the, myself in the interview, and, but I think it's important every year that we make a movie like this because it seems like, and maybe you can comment on this, that the real world, like modern day people just like, they just forget, like they just, um, uh, deny things that happened and I think it's so important that movies like this dealing with the subject matter you know mm -hmm. reminding that these are real stories this really happened yeah I don't think it's exactly a denial I just think it's lack of education to be honest and I think I think sometimes like you know we all go through different schooling and education systems and 
you know, depending on the teacher you have. Like, I remember in year five and six, I had a pretty, sorry, history teacher, but a pretty terrible history teacher. But in year eight and nine, I had an incredible one, mm -hmm. you know? And so, so this is education, like all this stuff is absorbed through your teachers, the people, your mentors. And, and in a way, Ama has been our mentor through this journey. So what we've learned, what we've absorbed is because we have a great leader, a great teacher. Sure. Uh, oh. No, I was just going to say, I feel like in moments of social upheaval and chaos, we sometimes forget to look at history because we have this notion that it's the first time that it's happened. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely not the case. And so it does feel really yeah. critical at moments like this to look at the past and see what happened. Yeah, history repeats itself, that's for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you learn from any early screenings uh, that impacted the finished film? Wow, that's such a good question. Really interesting Oh question. my God, what did we learn? It didn't change very much. I've worked on films that, that did change. I mean, what I learned about the screenings that didn't really change the film was that um, unlike the other films that I made, people people were finding it difficult to come back into this world from the movie. Um, I think that the, the movie is completely unexpected um, for many audiences, and not, not just because Lena is a, a, a child of color placed within the center of you know Nazi Germany, um, but because you know it's often sold as a love story, and um, and it is. It has a lot of love in, in this, but it's it's not it's not an aspirational love story. It's not the love that you go out to seek when you leave the cinema. And so I think that what, the, what I learned was um, how stunned audiences were by the work and how much time they needed once they saw the movie um, to to come back into this world and to really kind of gather their thoughts. And I think I learned um, why it's important to tell these stories because, you know, when you do a test screening, you have all kinds of people, all kinds of levels of education are in the audience, professors through to, you know, college students. And when you find that people who, you know, we have an amazing professor who's a consultant on this film, um, uh, Professor Eve Rosenhut, and she um, was stunned by the end of this film, even though she's a professor of German history and her speciality is the black experience during the Holocaust. She was still stunned by how it made her feel and her, what she said to me is, you know, to, to study it is one thing, to watch it as an, ex sure. an experience is, is completely different. And I, I think that, that that's what I learned. And in that I learned really the importance of the story, the importance of film, Sure, you know? Um, you, we're almost out of time. Before yeah. you leave, I would like to, uh, we've been, some, everyone who's been coming through has been playing something called Get to Know Your TIFF Attendee. I promise these are harmless questions and they're fun. For the three actors, uh, what TV show would you love to guest spot on? And uh, what TV show would you love to guest direct? Oh, okay. Um, guest spot on. <laughs> I, don't, I don't watch much television. Me neither. I was like, this is the worst question ever. <laughs> oh, come I, went from, I was like, oh, I don't even to watch TV. Like, like, come on, I'm not like pulling strings. Totally. Be something from my oh yeah, job. definitely. People have said mash. And like Mash. chips. Oh my I've god, heard everything. I love that. Biker Grove. <laughs> what? Biker Grove. So oh my god, it's so British. Oh, Biker like, Grove is like, right it's like a teen drama. Um, it's very, very British. Yeah. I'd like to be on Insecure. Yeah, Insecure. Oh, I now you're good. Smash that. Now he's my be. girl too. So I'm just, I'm gonna start like inserting that idea. I love that. Put it out to you. <laughs> Come on, Abby. I don't know. I don't have. I honestly, I have to be really honest. I grew up on 170 acres in the middle of nowhere with no television. I do not watch telly. <laughs> I just have to be totally honest. I like how she's delivering okay, her straight to camera. I know. <laughs> she's like looking at the audience. It's honestly, I don't watch like, breaking the board. She's looking straight at it. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't. Can it's I look straight sad. at the camera? Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hand. Maid's Tale. Word. Yeah. Thank you. And good night. Yes. Can you change and your answer? Up. What? <laughs> right. yeah. um, what, what film scared you as a kid? Oh, I'll um, it. Signs. Oh. I you're young. Just one I was going to be like, and you are young. Yes. Yeah, Amanda, Amanda's still thinking. She's like, I'm not scared of anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wait. What's the Halloween movie with the three witches? 
Pocus you, Pocus? Pocus Pocus. Oh used to scare God. the crap out of me. That was a little creepy. Bambi. And now I watch it now. Like, Bambi. Bambi terrified me. Well, yeah, the yeah, loss is pretty. Bambi yeah, the loss is deep, man. Yeah, the loss it's is still deep. resonating. Yeah. Yeah. I know, even yeah. when you see a little Bambi figurine somewhere, right. you just yeah. start to cry. Exactly. No, it terrified me. Completely. What is the background photo on your phone? Should I go first? Mine is um, two surfers um, going for a sunset surf out in Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> She's so funny. Such an Aussie. Mine's very boring. Mine's just the home screen that comes with it. <laughs> like, yeah, mine is, mine's boring also. What it's is the it? home screen. Okay. Mine is um, the secret wedding that my husband and I had before the wedding that everybody thought was our real oh. wedding. Oh. So, so in Vegas? It's the private. Oh, it's in Denmark. <laughs> yeah. This woman is a romantic. You yeah. know that one. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, what TV show have you watched all the way through more than once? If, if any, because Band of Brothers. Oh wow! Well, and Remy shot that. Remy, our DP on oh, this film. Uh, yeah. That's true. Actually, he, he shot Band of Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry. No. I'm so. I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> Arrested Development. Oh my God! All the way through, husband. Um, <laughs> uh, more than once. Handmaid's Tale. Okay. Yeah. That, sorry. Have you watched? Have you watched any movie more than twenty times? Yes. And Ferris Bueller's Day Off. What's that? The Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I love that. Uh, the Disney, the animated Jungle Book. <laughs> the Godfather, but I always fall asleep. That's why I put it on. It's you like it's like my it's like my nap time. I'm like okay, That's look, like, I really, really get to chill. sleep. It's your valley on the Godfather. It's, like, it's terrible. I was gonna be like, and I could never, asleep. I could never. Fall oh no, asleep. I love it. I love it. I just, I, I could just hits me. I and I'm Wait, like which in bed. Like the Godfather. Yeah. Like okay. Yeah, or the Godfather two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Godfather um, two. Is so Jenny. either or, is basically like you know a lullaby. Oh jeez. <laughs> is that weird? Yeah. Daddy, yeah, Daddy lullaby. Dancing. Okay, weird. Yeah, it's a lullaby. Little weird. <laughs> Daddy dancing. Uh, uh, probably about yeah. forty-two times yeah. right now. Right. Have, you, have any of you seen something more than 50 times? No. No. Who has that much My own time? film. Well, that, yeah, yeah, completely. <laughs> yeah, um, fair enough. <laughs> you're like, oh, my last three films. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do you, do you own any movie or TV show props? No, I don't. I have Lena's shoes. Well, I mean, oh. it, uh, Did you borrow them or were you given them? <laughs> you have Lena's shoes. I do. I yeah. have the Weissmuller ring that he gave you. I also have a Weissmuller I have a Weissmuller ring. So we all Wait, have a bicycle ring. Have a bicycle Wait, ring. there's more than two? Stop <laughs> it. alert. Yeah. Stop it. Sequel. <laughs> no, man. No, no, no. no sequel here. No, no sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so who has rings? So the three of you have rings. Yeah, hey, where's my ring? I'm just thinking. We'll get you one, man. We'll we get you one, man. I'd wear that, you know. No, man. You can make it in gold. It's totally fine. I mean, I don't know what to do with it. I look <laughs> at it and I'm like, what do I do with this ring? Yeah. Because what it means yeah. I know, it's in the lot, movie is it? Like, yeah. yeah, I've never actually worn it. I think I'm no, I just I just strange. look at it. Just look, just at, look it. at it. Yeah. Um, on that note, I could ask you a million other things, but you have more interviews to do. I just want to say sincerely, congrats on the movie. Thank you. I'm really happy you guys made this, and happy for you guys. Uh, thank you again for coming into the studio. Thanks. Have a fantastic day. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.